Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, these are the Kickstarter um, exclusives and bonuses for um, stretch goals, I believe, for Cthulhu Wars. Uh, this was Cthulhu Wars Onslaught 2 Kickstarter. And um, what we have right here is the first item we're going to go over, which is the Omega Edition uh, rule book. So this was uh, something that was in the stretch goals, obviously, and the add-ons. So uh, this just collects all the rules for the game and in a hardback format. So you've got the rules from the core box set, as well as the uh, expansion boxes. There's a lot of art. It's very pretty. So like there's the Cosmic Terrors box that we looked at, independent great old ones, got all the information right here, and then physical appearance there. So there's the different packs. Oh, look, there's the cards and the spell books. So everything is conveniently located in a hardback format. This is really beautifully drawn. The art is fantastic. Page quality is pretty good too, very impressive. Um, I worry a little bit about the binding, uh, but it does look really nice. So yeah, uh, pretty cool looking. That's uh, uh, probably gonna end up cost you a lot of money online. Uh, thankfully Wyatt let me open all of his cool stuff from the Kickstarter, so uh, we're gonna have a lot to go over this episode. We're going to start with this one. Uh, this is a mystery. I believe the uh, CWU6 is this package. And according to the manifest, uh, this should be the HP Lovecraft first player token bust. So let's see what we got here. Sure enough. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit here. Alright, so. Well, that's a lot more solid than I thought. Uh, there's a plastic piece on the base. Uh, otherwise, it's one molded piece. Um, his hair is glued on. But otherwise, looks pretty good. It looks like the torso and the head part of the bust might also, like the lapels here, that might be a separate piece as well. Uh, but it's pretty nice. It's not as heavy as I would like it. Personally, I think it should be a little bit heavier. But it is pretty nice looking piece. Um, it's a lot bigger than I expected, that's for sure. Uh, like, here's a box cutter. So it's almost as tall as that. So yeah, pretty cool. Alright, let's put that away and look at the next item. Alright, up next we have CWU8, and let's check the inventory list. Alright, U8 is the Homebrew Faction plus Collectibles 15 exclusive, whatever that is. Oh, it's a bunch of little minis. So this must be to uh, do your own adventures. We've got a red, I um, forget what they're called, the little flying guys. There's a red satyr. We've got a generic high priest. Uh, 
uh, generic alkalites, or yeah, the rest are just cultists. Same quality as the others, just different color, so you can do your own team faction or whatever you want to create. Um, the fly guys were in one of the other boxes. I think they were in the one with the Seder, actually. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, do it yourself kind of thing. Let's get those out of the way. There's some really cool stuff in this. Uh, these are all by Peterson Games. Uh, Peterson Entertainment, whatever it's called. Really nice quality, very impressive. I don't know how to make things fit. All right. Uh, next we have two boxes of CW E14. We got the logo on the front, and E14 is why is this not on here? This is custom dice pack. So there's two of these here. Oh, okay. Those are pretty cool looking. So we got two sets, uh, one for each player, I guess, for me and him to play. Uh, we got the yellow sign. Uh, we got five purple dice, one white die with uh, the goat horns on it. One with that spider thing. Uh, one with the, one of the other signs, and the gray one with the like ice. Sign. I don't remember who that goes to. I have the attention span of a gopher today, so I apologize for that. These are really nice dice, actually. Um, they're just six-siders with some different symbols on them and different numbers. But pretty cool looking. Cool. Next we have uh, CWE15. And E15 is the Shining... Trapezohedron plastic marker pack. This is another exclusive. Finding these is going to probably be pretty expensive. Uh, a lot of this stuff is going to end up costing you if you didn't get it in the Kickstarter because um, people reselling them are going to charge you an arm and a leg. Oh, this is all the extra bits. Alright, so we've got the hourglass in here. There's some plastic webbing, the brain cylinders. All right, let's look at the brain cylinders because they're cool. All right, so there's some stickers on here. Um, got some yellow sign desecration markers. There's a bunch of those in here, a bunch of webbing tokens. Pretty nice. Uh, they're, they're like vinyl plastic. Uh, these are actually pretty pretty impressive. Um, little tree branch sign ones. Uh, there's some whatever that gross stuff is. And there's different color brain cylinders. Uh, these are kind of cool. Very highly detailed. Uh, the cylinder itself looks a little generic. If I would have made them a little bigger with put plastic on them. But there's different colors of that. Let's see, orange, green, blue, red, purple, yellow. Oh, there's more. It's like uh, powder blue. It's like this fleshy pink. Ooh, this this is scary. Check out that. That's a little altar type thing. There's a whole bunch of these littler tokens. And you do get multiples of these brain cylinders. So there's there's quite a bit in here. Um, now am I going to be able to get them all back in that box? Probably not. 
yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, these uh, probably could have been a little bit different type of plastic, but not bad. They're just vinyl, simplistic, you know, tokens. They're fairly heavy, so they should stay on the board. Um, the brain cylinders are probably the coolest bit. They're very detailed, and uh, I think these are the brain cylinders. They, they, that's what they look like. But they're pretty cool looking, whatever they are. And the yellow sign desecration tokens are pretty nice. They're a little bit better than I expected, honestly. And these things are real scary looking. Uh, there's some little bits that probably could get busted off of the, on the tips here. So you'll want to check yours to make sure none of the tentacle areas are, are broken off. I think there's only one of those in here. Yeah, I only see one of that altar thing. There might be more, but there's a lot of stuff in this bag, so. And I'm not dumping the whole entire contents out, because this video will be two hours long. I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the type of uh, Kickstarter exclusives that came with this. Alright, next we're going to look at... These E13s, these are CW E13, there's three of them, and these are extra battle dice. Ooh, those are cool. They've, they're like blanks, and then these like claw marks, and then some like skeletal squid heads. Are they all the same? There's a lot of them in there. Yeah, these are really cool looking. They're all the same, I think. Yeah. So you got three boxes of those, but yeah, these are pretty cool looking dice. Let's take one out and get a better look at it. Yeah, so it's got little claws on it. And then a little squid head. And a blank. Looks like there's three blanks, two claws, and one squid head. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's get... Let's see. Fight with this stupid box. I'm gonna win, box. All right. Next, we've got CWE11, which is upgraded cardstock items, generic. So let me adjust the camera here. All right. So let's see what this is. This was wrapped up. Oh, this is a bunch of little stuff. Alright, so we've got a bunch of little multicolor tokens here. We've got um, green, yellow, like a, that powder blue, or off-white of some kind, bluish-white. There's blue, orange, red, and purple. So it looks like one for each major faction. And these are just little plastic tokens. Uh, kind of cool though, they got a little symbol on them. Then, these are kind of cheap. Ritual track for three player, four player, five player, six player, which just goes up to ten. Uh, same as five player, just slightly longer. Um, there's a seven player track. They're all numbered the same, so I don't really see the... Oh, okay, there's a couple of extra nines and eights on here. Alright, so yeah, like, the eight player has five, six, 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 seven, 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 eight, 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 nine, 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 ten. And the seven player ritual track 
goes five six 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 seven 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 eight 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 nine 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 ten so it's one shorter on the sevens eights and nines and the six player track um, has one five two sixes three sevens two eights or three eights two nines and a ten the five player track has a five two sixes two sevens two eights two nines and a ten the four player track has five six two sevens two eights one nine and a ten and then the three player track has one five one six one seven one eight one nine one ten uh... these could have been a little nicer quality that they're okay uh... the doom track here that was the ritual track this is the doom track um, 30s game over but it still goes up to 46 so uh, that's okay quality not real impressed uh, we've got um, Gahan Thora's card here independent great old one it's on cardstock real nice thick cardboard uh, like you'd want um, that's cool independent great old ones we've got a uh, Cthuga card Solid, thick card stock, real nice. We got some spell books here. Uh, there's three yellow signs, one sleeper, two black goats, one Azathoth. We got one for Cthuga, one for Bakrug, and one for Gethanoth. Yep, never gonna pronounce those right. They're two sided, so you know whose is whose. Let's look at what these are. Um, the black goat, we have the red sign, ongoing, dark young can create g gates, control gates, each add one to Shubnigroth's combat, and each earn one power during the gather power phase. They do not act as cultists with respect to any other purpose. Then there's Groth, action two, roll one die, if the result is equal to or less than the number of areas containing fungi, your enemies must eliminate cultists equal to that role between them. They have one minute to decide how many each to lose. If they cannot agree, you choose for them. If the result is higher than any, is higher than the number of areas with fungi, place an alkalite of any faction anywhere on the map. Then King in Yellow, we have Passion ongoing. When one or more of your cultists are eliminated by an enemy, killed, captured, etc., gain one power. He who is not to be named not Voldemort. Action cost one. Move Haster to any area containing a cultist of any faction. The cultist said his name, possibly by accident. Immediately after you take a second different action, you may not take the Screaming Dead as your second action. Uh, the third card is the Screaming Dead. Action cost one. Move the King in Yellow to an adjacent area. Any undead in the um, same area can move with him for free. Immediately after you may take a second different action, you may not take he who is not to be named as your second action. And then the sleeper card is if uh, Sathuga is in play, your enemy chooses one of the following options before ba a battle with you. One, you gain an elder sign, or two, all their kills count as pains on your units in this battle. Alright, then we've got the Azathoth card. Shriveling, pre-battle. Select an enemy, monster, or cultist in the battle. That unit is eliminated and the owner receives the power equal to the unit's cost. Then we've got Cthuga, Firestorm, post-battle. If Cthuga is involved in a battle or for each killed enemy unit you spare, you also gain one Elder Sign. Then we've got uh, Bakrug. Doom that came to Sarnath, Doom Phase. This ability is not optional. At the end of the Doom Phase, select an enemy and select one of these two options. One, he chooses a monster or cultist of yours to eliminate. Two, he chooses one of your Elder Signs to discard. And then the other guy's name I can't pronounce, uh, Get, get Hanothoa? Uh, Excoration of Moo, ongoing. The Mummify ability is no longer in action. It now occurs instantly when any enemy Alkalite cultists share an area with this guy's name I can't pronounce. Alright, then we've got the Black Goat card. 
it's uh it's matte finish it, these are a little bit nicer than the other the ones that come in the box I'm not bothering to zoom the camera out because you probably already know what all this stuff does so it's a I think it might even be slightly bigger than the other one but it is a little nicer but I don't know that a little disappointed with these um they're still cool they're just could have been cooler there's great Cthulhu then there's uh, Opener of the Way. Uh, this one's kind of neat because that's one, one of the other boxes. Uh, then there's Windwalker. So the flavor text is on the back, but place for all the spell cards. So the new faction cards, or new factions uh, have these. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's only uh, four of them. I would have thought there was more, but there's only four here. So, all right. So that stuff's pretty neat. Uh, overall, pretty good. Um, the big uh, character card things—they're they're okay. The spell cards were uh, impressive as always. Same with the two independent cards; those are always um, really high quality. This new Doom track, it's all right. Not not as good as I would have made it, but I probably would run the company under doing things my way. These ritual tracks, eh, eh. I'd have to say I'm overall unimpressed with those. Uh, these old tokens are kind of cool though. So uh, this box came wrapped in a whole bunch of paper, and now I understand why they didn't want to get damaged in shipping. But, um, I don't, I don't think it really needed it. It depends on, I mean, the amount of stuff that is in this lot, I don't think it needed it, but good precautionary measure. Uh, next we're going to CWE10. And this one is, do do do, E10, Thick Punch Board Factions. So let's see what we've got in this one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, that's better. That's better. All right. Now you're talking. These are uh, much higher quality cards. Whereas those other ones we just literally looked at were cards. These are punch board. This is how I would do all of them. Because uh, I, I like spending money. So let's uh, open this up and look at it. Uh, this is awesome, honestly. Um, I would have uh, bought these two, um, not even as like a Kickstarter thing. I would have paid money for these. So I kind of wish I had gotten in on this Kickstarter because this would have been awesome. All right, so we've got the Black Goat, and this is real nice pegboard. So you can see how thick that is. Um, corners are a little dinged up, but not too bad. Then we've got the Crawling Chaos. We've got Great Cthulhu. There's the Yellow Sign. We've got the Opener of the Way. Uh, there's Sleeper. And then Windwalker. So yeah, this is what I, what I was just literally complaining about. This is how I would have made them. And this is how they should have been in the in the core box, honestly, in my opinion. Um, this is worth the, a couple extra bucks any day because these are real nice, solid. You could probably whack someone with this. I'd kill flies with this. Uh, I'm not going to because what a waste of money. But you got all your information on here, area for spell books, and uh, you got your power thing up here, of course. Everything you need, the usual flavor text. They're just like the regular cards, but much better quality. It's got a nice matte finish, uh, real good quality board, real thick. I really like that. Um, yeah, that, that makes me happy. So I look forward to uh, throwing down with Wyatt more than ever now because uh, these things are awesome. All right, let me get these put away, and we'll get on to the next piece. There's just a few more to go. All right, uh, save that one for last. There's CWU4. 
And U4 is Gates. I'm using a cutter. Don't use cutters without grown up permission. So let's see what we got here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of Gates. Look at that. That's a big bag of Gates. That's what that is. So instead of little cardboard foo foo gates, you get big manly gates. Now these are really cool because uh, Wyatt actually already got one of the other exclusive, was, which was uh, colored versions of these for Color Out of Space um, that I didn't open when I opened his other stuff. Um, but the the smaller figures, like the Alkalites, will fit in here, and then the larger ones will sit on this area here. And then the tall, great old ones will sit on top of these. So you can actually set them on the gates, and they'll they'll fit on there, and be fairly snug. So uh, yeah, real nice. It's got the little pinnacle in there, and uh, real neat little piece. Real solid too. I mean, that's some thick plastic. It's all one molded piece. Uh, not a lot of pieces to break off, so pretty solid. Real impressed with these, but there's a whole mess of them here. Uh, so if you get a chance to get these, I recommend it, just because they look really cool and you can paint them up for the different factions and whatnot. Or just try and find the color out of space ones. Those will probably cost you a little more, but they might be worth it. Depends how diehard you are. All right. Then we've got this one here is, uh, oh, these are the glow ones, CWGLO2, and that is the uh, glow goose, so Oh, these are just haphazardly thrown in a box. Look at that. These are all the glow and dark figures. Um, this is some terrible packaging. All right, so we've got a whole mess of cards here, which is kind of cool. Uh, just the usual sort of uh, cards and spell books. There's two little boxes here that we'll get into in a second. And then we've got the regular minis. Which you're going to have to be real careful with taking out if you're just getting yours in the mail. Um, because they're literally shipped in a plastic bag. I don't know why these aren't in like little boxes at least. Um, I think that's lazy and cheap. But let's see what we got here and make sure nothing's broken. Okay, this is the one I worried about the most being broken. And you can see he's not. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, these are supposed to glow in the dark. Um, uh, they're basically just the regular figures, just glow in the dark. And everything's better than glow in the dark. Um, here's the next one. And these are really hefty minis, so the, it, they've kept the quality, which really impresses me. But um, I would like some better packing. I may even repack these a little better myself before I take them over to Wyatt. Yeah, like this guy, this is pink. Um, there's like discoloration right here I don't know if you can see that on the camera there's like a black discoloration there that's I don't know if that's a molding issue or something else it looks like it's a molding issue this guy looks really cool uh, it doesn't look like anything's busted but see with all these loose bits here those could easily get broken and I, I was a little worried that some of these might be busted once I saw them in the bag. But they look like they're okay. Uh, they are really solid. Ooh, he looks really cool. Um, yeah, these are just the other guys. That, I, I think all of these, are, or most of them at least, are in the original box. But, you know, these were stretch goals, so... I still don't know which way's front on this guy. 
so yeah but they look really cool the the colors came out well I don't know how well they're gonna glow in the dark I think the blue one will be fine the green one and red and orange should be okay too I do worry about the red one a little bit because you might get banged up see how, how well I can repack them um, I think they should be okay I don't know why they were sent in just a plastic bag that's that's really lazy uh, just asking for something to be busted um, but they, they, they are very beautiful miniatures they're very creepy looking and I, I do worry that they could get broken fairly easily so I'm gonna just put them back the way I got them out and uh, put the try and get them back in the box without uh, damaging them I'm, I'm gonna try and repack them in case why it's watching this I'm gonna try and put them in a, a little bit better than they came in but yeah these are real cool um, I was a little worried about that red one like I said uh, I kind of forgot there were glow-in-the-dark ones in the in this set uh, let's see what's in these other two little boxes this is what they should have come in in my opinion each one should have been in its own little box yeah like this guy uh, here's Narlothotep he's in his own box I don't know why the others weren't um, he has probably about the same amount of breakable bits maybe even a few less than uh, the black goat but that that one wasn't in a box and this one was I'm glad this one was in a box it was upside down in the box but it was in a box so there's that let me get him gently put away here And next we have this one. This is the last one for this box. And there's two minis in this box. Come on, people. All right, the king in yellow looks really cool. And so does this guy, actually. Uh, yeah, both those minis look cool to begin with. I actually kind of prefer the solid yellow. Um... Yeah, I, I, I really did prefer the solid yellow on this one, I think. Um, this, he looks, he'll probably look creepier in the dark or dim lighting where he's glowing. But as it stands now, I, th I think he looked better at solid yellow. Uh, just because he's the king in yellow. And uh, this looks more ethereal. And I don't think he's supposed to look more ethereal. Uh, this guy looks pretty cool because he looks more like water. That clear plastic really does a good job of that. Um, and he'll, the, I think all of them probably look good if they're actually glowing in the dark, but um, This one I'd have to say I prefer in the solid. I don't know why they're both in one box, but It's fairly easy to put them in there without having them run into each other too much, but Yeah, I don't like the packaging of these. They could have been done a lot better These two are probably the best ones out of those that, um to put together but the ones in the bag that's just lazy come on Peterson I expect a little better of you honestly um, yeah I'm gonna have to put those in a better box when I take them over and then lastly we have CW glow one which is the one everybody's gonna want to see because this is the glow in the dark uh, of the last character that you didn't see and that is, of course, Cthulhu. And he looks awesome. Uh, I love this miniature to begin with. Uh, but this is... This is amazing. This I love that almost slight glow to it. This is... Uh, I like this one probably better than the original. The base is a little rounded though, I don't like that. This area here is a little rounded. It's just a really cool sculpt. Um, I almost talked a buddy of mine into getting this tattooed on his leg because it's just such a cool looking rendition of Cthulhu. I don't like that the base is rounded because he kind of rocks. 
where it rolls with the waves. Uh, but it is a beautiful sculpt. This is uh, definitely one I would want in my collection. I kind of want one, but I don't have the money to buy it. So this is a really beautiful figure. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, the, the one in the core box looks awesome too, but man, if you can get your hands on one of these, uh, getting the Kickstarter for just for this would have made it worth my, my while. Uh, but you also get his card and spell book, which was jammed in the box, or one of the spell book cards. Uh, devour, choose an enemy, eliminate one of his monsters or cultists. Uh, this card got a little banged up, because it was rounded around him. Thankfully, it's just the piece that goes around the card, and not the actual card from the look of it. So, because it got curled around the base of the figure. So thankfully these are big enough that it didn't hurt the actual card, it just hurt the outer thing. So be aware of that if you ordered one of these. Uh, but yeah, this is a real nice figure. Uh, I'm really impressed with this one. This, even though he like doesn't, he wobbles a little bit, I don't even care. It looks cool, it looked cool on a display. And I'm going to put him in the box without the card and I'm going to put the card separately because that was stupid to put those together in one box. All right, so that I believe is everything on the list. Oh no, there's one more piece. Let me pause the cameras and uh, get that out because the cameras are in the way. This big box here, which is incredibly heavy, is CWM10. This is the six to eight player maps. It is probably the heaviest thing that it was in the box, and um, it's mostly just solid cardboard. So let's open this up. Well, that's cute. And let's see if any of this stuff got damaged in shipping. Oh, it's not even wrapped. That's that's just lazy. All right, that's my second complaint of this whole thing. All right, so here we've got some altars on token board. Uh, usual high quality stuff. Nothing to complain about there. Let me adjust the camera and lay these out a little. Now these are two-sided. So, um, that is nice. Um, all right, so here is Earth six-player map. This is part of it, of course. Uh, this map is gigantic. Uh, you can see most of my table here. And, alright, so we've got West Africa, East Africa, uh, the Indian Ocean, Mountains of Madness down below here. I don't know how well this is showing up on screen. Antarctica next to the Mountains of Madness, um, Mediterranean Sea, Arabia, South Asia, which is Lang. North Asia, Bering Sea over there, North Pacific over there, uh, Lomar at the top, Scandinavia, uh, Drydetch, which is Europe, and the yellow sign there. On the other side of this one is the eight player. These are fourfold, so uh, it looks very similar. So, the, like, Bohemia is here now, and North Africa and West Africa are split. Um, Central Asia, North Asia, South Asia, Arabia. So that's the first part. Let's take a look at the next one. These are high quality. Uh, I want to make sure that all these are not damaged because uh, they were in the bottom of the box and um, they weren't wrapped, which is very frustrating. All right, so this is the other half of the six player map. So this time we've got the South Pacific. Uh, there's Riley, uh, New Zealand, Australia, South America West, South America East, North Atlantic, North America East, North America West, Central America, Bering Sea, Arctic Ocean. So let's look at the 8 player on the other side, see how North America fares on the 8 player map. So we've got North America East, North America West, the Yukon, 
Central America, Bering Sea, North Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, North Pacific, Indian Ocean, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, South America West, South America East, and Patagonia. So a few new areas. Um, oh, this could be a nightmare playing with eight players. Uh, this one looks good. Nice uh, matte finish like the other one. Um, let's move that set aside. I don't like the box they were shipped in. It was a real cheap cardboard box and you could tell that the, the one leaf was busted. Alright, so where's the six player? Alright. This is the primeval map, six player. We've got the Raik Ocean, Lower Mu, Central Mu, Dark Tower, Upper Mu, uh, Mezicalera Ocean, Morovia Ocean, Poseidonis, Lomar over here in the corner, Atlantis, halfway on the map, Ocean Trench, uh, Rutas, Terra Australis, and Antarctica at the bottom. Which you can't really see because my other camera's in the way. And then on the, on the eight player side, we have Ocean Boil, Lower Moo, Central Moo, Upper Moo, Dark Tower still, Morovia Ocean. This almost looks exactly the same, honestly, except it has Terra Borealis next to Poseidonis, uh, Rutas, Terra Australia. Yeah, this one looks very similar. So that's the eight player. Get this crappy piece of cardboard out of the way. So that's the primeval first half. Let's look at the other half. Alright, so this is the other half of the primeval. You got the this is the six player. Tetyus Ocean. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. Um, we'll call it the Chick Ocean. West Atlantis. Uh, Parathius Ocean. Thule, Hyboria. Uh, Mezcalaria Ocean. Ipius Ocean. Shasta. South Lemuria. East Lemuria. Alright, so this one actually looks pretty cool. I'd be interested to do this as a two player. Um, I think it would be a really long game though. Or a horribly short one. The eight player, um, we've got Thule, Hyboria, Rapia, the Ocean, Chick Ocean, Parathis, West Atlantis, Thasis Ocean, East Lemuria, Uhu, Uluru, Shasta, South Lemuria, and the Ipetus Ocean. Yeah, um, this one would be kind of a tough one, I think. Um, it doesn't look that much different than the six player version and they both look very similar to the regular version So I, I'm a little disappointed by this one, but I'd be interested in trying it So give me one second to get the next one out. I'm gonna figure out where to put some. Okay All right next we have Six player Dreamland Surface. Uh, still a small map, which means it'll be a giant nightmare to fight in. Uh, especially six players on this. So we've got uh, Nar, Zura, Southern Sea, Zack, the Enchanted Woods with the letter C on it, Zura's A, uh, Katheria, uh, Serene Ocean Sea that's got dice number three on it. One and two is in Minar. Ulthi um, Sarcomand has the B. There's Lang Sea of Dawn. The Nonestent Sea. Uh, Selfus four, and it's got the yellow sign. Um, Sunken City Sea five to six. Mount. Mm, Granek is D. So again, still a small map. Enchanted Woods. 
so in the center there's only one water thing uh, really well I guess there's three other ones four other ones so yeah I guess there's enough water on there um, because if you're playing Cthulhu that might be kind of tough see if Dawn's got Cthulhu symbol on it so I, I don't know this would be a tough one especially with six players um, but yeah this one might be pretty cool six player actually because it'd be a huge challenge somebody's getting eliminated right away eight player we've got Southern Sea Banazic Desert Zura, Zach, Enchanted Woods, Sunken City, Sea, Mountain again, Crenizia, Sea, Sarcomand, uh, Inquanoc, Ulthui, Lang, Nonestic Sea, Forbidden Lands, and Celephius. Oh, in Cathuria here, next to Minar. So yeah, um, eight player map, uh, it's still a small map. There's slightly more space. Still got a good chance badness is going to pop up on on your D6 there and get attacked by monsters. Um, but yeah, it could be a could be a tough one, especially with eight players. I don't, you're going to be all over each other real quick on this map. So let's uh, let's move this one and look at the next map. Alright, so here we have the Dreamlands Underworlds map. Make sure I got most of that in shot. Sorry, I got weird camera angles in here because this is a small table. And uh, I don't have the large tripod with me. Uh, we've got Sea of Pitch, Black Church, Vast Cavern. Uh, sea of Pitch is 1 to 2. 3 is Vaults of Zin. Fungus Lake Sea is number 4. And uh, 5 to 6 is Vast Cavern. Peaks of Throck is in between four and five, uh, five to six. So Vale of Pananth Sea. Good luck if you're playing Cthulhu. You got like three options. Um, Ruins of Koroth or Koroth, yeah, something. Tower of Koth. Vaults of Zin is number three. Plain of Ghouls. Uh, Plain of Ghouls has uh, wait. Ruins of Koroth has A. Plain of Ghouls is B. And C is Tower of Koth. Uh, D is down in Peaks of uh, Throck. So the other side, six or the eight player. All right, we've got Sea of Pitch one to two. We've got Ruins of Croth, Monolith Wastes. Um, Ruins has A. Um, Tower of Koth, just C. Black Lake. Vaults of Zin is number three. Uh, Plain of Ghouls is B. Fungus Lake is still no, uh, roll four. Vast Caverns is five to six. Peaks of Tho Th Throck is D. And Hersag and the Vale of Pananthese is still in the center. Um, still not super impressed with. Uh, the fact that there's eight players on this map, like a couple people are going to get eliminated real quick. It could be a real short game. Yeah, or at least come down to one or two people within a very short time with, with these Dreamlands maps. So, yeah, um, I'm f figuring you're playing above ground and below ground at the same time. If not, it should be a rule because that would be more interesting. Uh, but I'm not sure. So uh, we'll just have to play it out and find out. We haven't played these yet because obviously I'm just opening everything. But yeah, the maps look cool um, so far. Uh, eight players though. Wow, what a nightmare. All right. So much cool stuff in this package. All right, this six player Yugoth map. It's the first half. All right, this is the half with the pyramid on it. So we've got the Methane Sea over here, Del Desolation of Kanath, uh, Tokel Mines, Nitrogen Sea, Desolation of Zax, uh, the Gorg Zone, Ammonia Sea, and then they got the pyramid here. We've got the Pyramid of Emerald Slope, which is number two, the Watcher's Postern at one. 
Um, pyramid malachite slope is three, and four is the py uh, pyramid painted slope. So watcher is going to be a uh, poking around here somewhere pretty quickly, honestly. All right, let's look at the eight player side of this one, and then we'll get the other half out. So the eight player side. Looks very similar. We got the Spore Badlands, Toxin Disposal, Pyramid Painted Slope, Painted Emerald Slope again, Pyramid uh, Malachite Slope, same numbers, Ammonia Sea, uh, Th Thogakic Sea, Zaman, Desolation of Zax, Methane Sea, Typhinian Sea, Tokel Mines, Desolation of Knath, and the Nitrogen Sea. So, oh, and the uh, Goric zone at the top. So this one doesn't look too much different. Uh, just added a few little places. Um, not much to say about that. Uh, that map actually looks pretty cool. Um, the whole thing with the watcher sounded pretty uh, sketchy and difficult. So that one might be a good one to play. Alright, there's the other half of the Ugoth map. Uh, this is the six player side again. So the Sea of Madness is down here in the corner. We got the Polar Sea, the Tidalis Steeps, the Emptiness, the Radiation Waste, Oxygen Sea, Laboratories at the top, then the Spore Badlands up in the corner. Down here we got the Toxin Disposal, West Slime Sea, Slime Sea Overlook, North Slime Sea, East Slime Sea, and South Slime Sea. And it looks like the yellow sign's over in Radiation Waste, and uh, the goat is over in Sport Badlands, and uh, this dude's down here in Polar Sea. The laboratory, though, that's where you get your brain cylinders. Alright. Eight players, second half. We've got Sport Badlands, Toxin Disposal, Zothic Zone, South Slime Sea, Tindalo Steeps, Polar Sea, Sea of Madness. The Emptiness, Radiation Waste with the yellow sign, Oxygen Sea, Forest of Ni Nithon, Laboratory, SV, which somebody just threw letters on there, I think. North Slime Seas, Slime Sea Overlook, West Slime Seas, South Slime Sea, and East Slime Sea. So basically, most of the stuff is still in spaces you'd expect. Radiation Waste has the uh, yellow sign, Polar Sea has this guy, and uh, Goats up here in SV. So, yeah, um, this map looks alright, uh, kind of what you'd expect, um, but 8 player, that's going to get bloody fast. Next we've got the library. This is the 6 player library at Salino. This is the first half. Still can't get all that in the shot. Sorry. I'm going to be looking at my chair and my files behind it. Uh, Chamber of Acapulu. Uh, Malice Bonitium. Scorch Chamber. Chamber of Sngak. Uh, Oblet Sea. Uh, Perforier Hall Sea. That's a sea. Uh, Hyper Aquarium Sea. Okay, um, Charnel Hall, The Crawling Ones, Black Hall, Red Hall, Blue Hall. Nowhere is the card catalog shown. So we've got Cthulhu's here with E on this little staircase thing. Then there's D over here in uh, Malice. And then Chamber of Singak is A with the, I think that's the sleeper. Uh, B has Oblique and Blue Hall has C. And F is over in Crawling Chaos. Or Crawling Ones, my bad. That's the lower floor for the six player. Alright, the eight player map. Basically the same thing. We got Chamber of uh, Apokalu, Hidden Chamber, Malice Benitum with D, Scorched Chamber, Chamber of Zingak with A, uh, same guy, Abalik C, B, same dude. Blue Hall, C, that guy, Red Hall, Black Hall, Charnel Hall, Crawling Ones, still has F, Ossuary's new, 
Um, Hyper Aquarium C still has Cthulhu symbol and letter E. Acid Vet C and Porphyr Heart Hall C. And there's little gateway doors here. So this map actually looks kind of cool. That's the scariest library I've ever seen though. Uh, these are the maps I was worried about because they were on the bottom and I was worried that they might have been damaged during the shipping but they seem to be okay. Here's the other map, the last map and the last thing we're going to look at because this is this is it. This is all the stretch goals and add-ons you could get. So this is the upper floor of the library at Salerno. Six players. We got the Bikerary it's not where you store bikes, because I don't know how to pronounce anything, but it's where the bike he probably live. Uh, that's the letter A. You have, uh, these are I assume stairs up and down. Yarn, then, I'm not trying to pronounce that because it sounds like a racial slur. And I'm not getting demonetized for that. <laughs> um, barrier of Natch Tith is D. Lake of Holly Overlook C, E. Uh, Cursed Hall C. Gloom, Gloom Thought C, Blessed Hall, Fountain C with the goat and letter B. Floating Tower, which has the yellow sign on it. Hororium has C, Arcana Annex. Uh, then we've got Guardian Under the Lake, Larvae of the Outer Gods with F, and Lake of Hull, Holly Balcony C. All right, let's look at the eight player side uh, this is the upper floor still eight players for the library of Salerno we got the floating tower up here in the top with the yellow sign but it's starting like we have been over in the corner here which you can barely see because camera doesn't I don't have a wide angle in here barrier of Natchith uh, the Descola which has the D on it so that's a little different the stairways in a different area you are in the yep that word Biker Aries A, Tyndallis Hall, Fountain C as B in the Goat, uh, Blessed Hall, Gloomloft C, Cursed Hall C, Lake of Holly Overlook C with uh, E and that dude, Lake of Holly Balcony C, Larvae of the Outer Gods with F, uh, Guardian Under the Lake, Arcane Annex, Hororium, and Eschius Vermibus with C. So that staircase is moved too out of the Hororium over there. And then there's little doorways all over the place. There's only two on this one. So yeah, so um, I'm curious about the library one. I think that could be a really fun map to do. But the, these extra add-on maps are really cool. If you don't want to play eight player, you could play two player you know, with multiple guys, of course, and that could be really fun on some of these bigger maps, especially this one. This looks pretty interesting with the the doors and the stairs going up and down. So, yeah, um, that is uh, all the cool bonus cr stuff that uh, my buddy Wyatt got. Uh, that's, I believe, all the stretch goals and bonus stuff that came with this. So. Um, since that is everything that were was in these boxes, I thought this would be a nice uh, episode to do uh, because we rarely get to see the extra cool like stretch goals and stuff from Kickstarters. Usually it's just stuff I bought at retail stores. So it was really cool why to let me open all this stuff and uh, check it out before he got a chance while he's you know out and about. So that is Cthulhu Wars um, uh, Omega Edition. That you're looking at the Omega Edition rule book. Uh, this is the Onslaught 2 um, stretch goals and extras. So I appreciate him letting me open that and uh, hope you enjoyed it because I, I enjoyed seeing all this cool stuff. And we'll catch you on the next episode of What's Inside. Thanks for watching.